Hello, welcome to my sewing channel. My name is Delilah. Since spring is in the air, I decided to do a Easter project. So I have all these beautiful Easter fabrics that I'm going to show you, and we are gonna, yeah, have a moment to rip some things up. <laughs> I picked up all these fun Easter prints from Riley Blake Design. What we're going to do today is a fabric bunting, or you could call it like an Easter banner. And these are some that I've made in the past. Like, look how cute this is. It, it can be so simple, you guys. This is just made out of a charm pack. And I just sewed ribbon to the top of it and just cut out these felt letters and sewed them. I did a blanket stitch. So that one is really easy, but that's not the one that we're going to do today. You could even just do one with just fabric. So this one, I put the felt on the back to make it more sturdier, but we're not gonna do that one today either. <laughs> then we have this one, and no, I didn't get the holidays wrong. I do realize that this is Valentine's, but I love how this one turned out with the XOXO. And so the Easter, so what we're going to do today is one just like this, but it's gonna be with my Easter fabrics. Okay, so my little one, she woke up early, so you probably saw her in the shot. But let me go ahead and um, show you what you need for this project. You will want a variety of fat quarters, a triangle template, which I will show you the measurements on this one so that you can make your own. Pinking shears would be good, um, some rotary cutters. You're also going to want to have a long strip for the binding to attach them all together. Measures six and a half wide by seven inches down. Right here we are putting right sides together and we're just going to trace out the template. I'm not going to cut out the individual triangles yet. First, I'm going to sew on the marked line, and then after I'm done sewing the triangle, I'll cut it out at that time.
this mantle is roughly 60 inches. So I'm gonna cut two of these and then we should be safe. It's gonna give us well over 60 inches. Or depending on where you plan to hang this up, you'll do your own measurements for that. But I'm just going to, for this tutorial, cut two of these at two inches wide. And then we are just going to fold it like this and iron it and then fold it again to get our bias tape. And then I already had the markings in mine, so I'm going to trim that so it's or one eighth from that marking line. So I'm just gonna trim all of them like that. So now the edges are just nice and clean. And then just try to place them out and find an order that you like them to be in. And now we'll just start sliding the little flags into the bias tape, like this. So hug it up against the center and then fold it down like this. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in between because I'm gonna tie little bits of fabrics in between each pendant flag. This, these clips and make sure that you secure them down and just do that on each flag or pendant or whatever you wanna call it, each triangle. You could do any type of stitch right here that you want. I just didn't go with the straight line because I'm also got to make sure that I get the back as well, which doesn't seem to be an issue. I don't know. I just went with the zigzag, I guess, because I just felt zigzaggy today. For the beginning and the end, all I did is, I'll show you right here, folded in the raw edge and just tucked it in like that and then just folded it. So can you see that? So it's just gonna look, so it'll look just like that. So I'll just continue sewing to the end. Okay, so now we are done with the banner part. But for me, this isn't good enough. I want to add little uh, pieces of scrap fabric in between. You can leave it just like this if you want. You can also add like your felt letters if you want it to say spring or Easter or he is risen, anything like that. But I'm going to add strips of fabric. So I'm just gonna kind of play around with that for a minute. I cut out this two inch strip. So I'm just gonna see what this looks like. I can always cut it down smaller. Oh, whoops, hold on. I need to do it this way. Okay, so I did that kind of knot. I don't know the technical term. So, and I don't know if that's too thick yet. So we'll just see. You can even do just a regular traditional knot. Um, and then I'm, you know what, I'm gonna try to do it thinner and see what that looks like. So this, so that was a two inch width. This one is a, like a one and a half inch. Let's see if that one looks a little bit better. and then I'll just cut it down. But yeah, that I think that size definitely looks a little bit better. And so you can cut them with your pinking shears. Um, you can even rip it, like if you're mad, you can do the ripping. So if you feel like ripping it, just take it along the grain line like that, and you can just, you know, if you're feeling mad, just go ahead and rip it like that. And then you get that cute effect. Or if you're happy, you can just go ahead and cut it like this. So depending on what mood you're in, and I really, and I do like this look of the 
a little bit of the fraying, but I think I'm just gonna go with the pinking shears look because today I don't feel like ripping anything up. And the length of my strips that I'm gonna start with is just eight inches. That'll help you be able to tie it a little bit better and then you can trim it after you've tied it. And how I'm tying it is, is I'm just gonna do this like this and then pull it through this hole and then just pull it down so that the knot area is in the front like that and then you could also just do like a regular tie you could also add like baker's twine or different types of textures of ribbon see look how cute that is when you just tie it regularly and then you can just fix it and shape it however you want. So anything goes. Also, another thing to think about is if you really like those Cadbury eggs or, you know, the, the crispy shell Easter chocolate eggs, go to the store and get them now because I guarantee they're going to run out. I do have an upcoming tutorial that I'll show you more Easter sewing. And it involves chocolates and the chocolate eggs in the next couple of weeks and then also like the colored M&Ms because I do have another project that I want to show you that is going to be a Easter candy holder. Okay so at this point you can just be done if you're happy with it. You can attach the applique letters like I did on this one and just do a blanket stitch but in this tutorial I'm not going to do that. I'm kind of happy with it the way that it is. And remember, if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more Easter projects like this. So thank you for watching and happy sewing.